Hello, it's me, Sanish. Welcome to Bouncing Back to Basics in Anesthesia Tools. This time, I have come with some physics in anesthesia. I shall attempt to explain some differences in physical properties and watch out for my analogy using tea powder and salt. To explain the concept of solubility, let me take the help of Henry's law. It states that the amount of a given gas dissolved in a given liquid is directly proportional to the partial pressure of the gas in equilibrium with the liquid. Remember, the temperature needs to be constant. Now, in the figure shown here, the gas is at normal atmospheric pressure of 100 kilopascals and in equilibrium with the liquid below. In the next figure, the pressure is doubled to 200 kilopascal and hence there are twice as many molecules of gas above the water resulting in twice as many in solution. Note however that the temperature must be kept constant for this to apply. This principle is known as Henry's law. Now, what happens if the temperature is altered? Let's take a cylinder with 1 liter of water and expose in atmosphere of nitrogen. Left cylinder is at room temperature 20 degrees Celsius and right one at body temperature 37 degrees Celsius. The pressure of nitrogen in both cases is 100 kilopascal but the volume of nitrogen that is dissolved in 1 liter of water in the cylinder. At room temperature it is 16 ml whereas at body temperature it is only 14 ml. As the liquid is warmed less gas dissolves in it. What is its practical implication? In the OT bubbles of air may form in saline in an infusion line which has passed through a blood warming coil. Now consider what happens if a gas other than nitrogen is used. The measuring cylinder of the left contains 1 liter of water in an atmosphere of nitrogen and the right there is a similar cylinder in an atmosphere of nitrous oxide. At equilibrium, there is considerably more nitrous oxide dissolved in the liter of water than in the case of nitrogen. 390 ml of nitrous oxide versus 14 ml of nitrogen. So, different gases are found to have different solubilities. Finally, the liquid 2 must be specified as shown here. 390 ml of nitrous oxide dissolves in 1 liter of water at body temperature whereas 1 liter of blood dissolves 470 ml of nitrous oxide under the same conditions. To summarize, solubility depends on the partial pressure, temperature, gas and the liquid concern. What is partition coefficient? To understand the term partition coefficient, consider the example of nitrous oxide in blood. The partition coefficient is defined as the ratio of the amount of substance present in one phase compared with another, the two phases being of equal volume and in equilibrium. There is a unit volume of 1 liter of nitrous oxide above the same unit volume of blood which contains dissolved nitrous oxide in equilibrium at 37 degree Celsius. The volume of nitrous oxide dissolved in these circumstances is 0.47 liter and the ratio of 0.47 to 1 is the blood gas partition coefficient for nitrous oxide 0.47. If required, kindly pause the video, understand the concept and proceed. What is tension of a gas? 
The word tension is often used in place of partial pressure for gases in solution. The tension of a gas in solution is the partial pressure of the gas which would be in equilibrium with it. To make it more clear, see the example. The partial pressure of nitrous oxide in the gaseous phase above blood is 50 kilopascal. When in equilibrium, the tension of nitrous oxide in the blood is also 50 kilopascal. Agreed? Now let's get into the business. Here there are three measuring cylinders all containing one liter of blood at a temperature of 37 degrees Celsius and exposed to an atmosphere of nitrous oxide, halothane and ether respectively. The solubility coefficient of each anesthetic agent is given in the bottom. Okay, let us see what happens at equilibrium. You find that there are many more molecules of ether present in the blood because it has the highest solubility coefficient. The higher the solubility coefficient, the greater the number of molecules in dissolved state. We are now moving into an analogy of the uptake of anesthetic via filling of reservoirs in series. Let us familiarize with two sets of reservoirs. In both sets, the filling occurs with the same flow. The difference here is the diameter of the connecting pipes. It is narrow in set A compared to the one in set B. The wash off from the left half occurs via the tube into the right chamber. Let's start filling. Now you can find that the liquid level attained in set A is higher rather faster because the wash off is less. The tap represents the ventilation of the anesthetic into the lungs as represented by the left hand side of chamber in each set. The level of agent in the left sided chamber in each set represents the concentration of the anesthetic in the alveoli. The removal of anesthetic by pulmonary blood flow from the reservoir is denoted by the connecting pipe and the rate of transport by cardiac output is shown as Q. The right sided reservoir represents the tissues. You may note that the diameter of the connecting pipe is wider in the second set for ether. This is analogy for higher solubility coefficient. Remember for nitrous oxide blood gas partition coefficient is 0.47 as against 12 in the case of ether. In case of nitrous oxide the anesthetic agent is carried away only relatively slowly by the cardiac output because the solubility coefficient of nitrous oxide is only 0.47. The high solubility of ether in the blood means that it can be carried away from the lungs very rapidly. This is indicated by the very wide pipe and hence alveolar concentration of ether is only slightly above the tissue concentration or build up of adequate alveolar concentration will take more time in case of ether because of its high blood gas partition coefficient. Let us examine the graph illustrating the build up exponential curves produced if alveolar concentration of anesthetics are expressed as percentages of their inspired concentration that is Fa by Fi and plotted against time. It is seen that soluble anesthetics such as ether are very slow to build alveolar concentration because concentration of anesthetics in the blood and brain 
are close to alveolar concentration, there is a rapid onset of anesthesia in case of nitrous oxide and a slow induction of anesthesia with ether. Halothane with medium solubility has its curve falling between the two described above. Let us take another analogy to understand the concept. I have asked my daughter Anakha to get ready with a tea bag and my son Karthik with a bag filled with salt. Almost equal quantity in each bag. Everyone knows which is more soluble, right? Now I am asking them to dip it in respective glasses of warm water and see what happens. You can find the tea powder getting into the water. Salt must be getting dissolved faster. Unfortunately, we cannot appreciate with naked eyes. Now they are taking the bags out. See what happens. Because salt is very much soluble, nothing much is remaining in the bag. See the tea bag? It is still looking appreciably full. Similarly, if the solubility is less, the alveolar concentration of volatile anesthetic builds up faster. Okay, now is blood gas partition coefficient the only factor dictating the anesthetic profile? The answer is no. Fat is an important constituent of many body tissues being present in cell membranes and neurons in particular. Fat and oil are similar and because it is easier to ensure solubilities in oil, it is oil that is normally used for measurements. Agents that have the highest oil solubility are found to have the greatest potency as anesthetics and this was the basis of the mayer overton theory of anesthesia. The figure illustrates relative solubilities of nitrous oxide, ether and halothane in oil. The greater the solubility, the greater the number of dots representing the molecules of anesthetic agent in the oil. Remember that now the order of agents have changed. Although nitrous oxide is still the least soluble, the agent with the greatest solubility in oil is now halothane, either being placed in the midway. Here the vertical axis of the graph is minimum alveolar concentration in percentage. On the horizontal axis are the oil solubility coefficient. Logarithmic scale is depicted here. Commonly discussed agents are plotted here. Let us check the trend line. It is seen that an anesthetic with a high oil solubility is effective at a low MAC value. In other words, an anesthetic with a high oil solubility is effective at lower alveolar concentration and has a high potency. An alternative way of expressing this principle is to say that the MAC value for any anesthetic is related to the number of molecules of anesthetic dissolved in oil and this applies to all volatile anesthetic. Now before we conclude a trivia question, what do you mean by MAC value of nitrous oxide that is 104%? How do you attain a value above 100%? How was this value derived? The intention of this trivia question is just to make you understand the concept better. Bouncing back to basics is the mantra for better learning and simplified learning. It's me Sanish signing off. Goodbye.